everyone and welcome back to another episode of After the Finish Line. I'm on with someone who you may recognise. I know normally he's behind the mic, but today he's in front of the camera as well as behind the mic, if you will. Mr Matt Taylor, how are you today, Matt? I'm good. I'm fine. Thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, I haven't got my velvet blazer, so I'm a little bit cooler. I'm not too hot this time. The velvet blazer you, is... Jack. I'm dis- disappointed. Oh, no. It's at the laundrette. I keep having to wear it. It's week in, week out, <laughs> so I've finally given it a wash. And we've got your good lady friend here, Donna, your fiance. How are you today, Donna? I'm good, thanks. How good. are you? Yeah, fantastic. So obviously we've got Donna on because she actually did the Couch for 5K around about this time last year. It was during lockdown one um, and has gone on since to set PBs in 10K. She's got a half marathon coming up later in the year and she's been doing really well. So we thought as it was the Couch for 5K episode, we get her on and Matt because he was whining and stropping that Rob got his limelight and Matt didn't. So I've got him on. I've, I've, I've managed to sort it out with his agent and he's on. So... We we'll dive straight into it. Firstly, Donna, on the podcast, it was mentioned that uh, Matt had to do a little run, and it was in one of your dresses. Did he look all right in that dress? Do you think I thought he looked quite tasty? Actually, looked quite fit to be fair. <laughs> he, he did. I think like we might have to do a role reversal where Matt wears uh, where Matt wears your dress and you wear Matt's suit for a for a wedding. But obviously, the suit will be a little bit short because he's tiny. <laughs> But, I don't you know, need any excuse to wear a dress, I don't think, right, to be fair. <laughs> exactly. And it got some donations for Prostate yeah, Cancer yeah, UK. Um, yeah. Rob's doing his ice bucket thing. And if you want to donate any monies, just put ice bucket down in the name and here have another bucket of ice chucked over him. And I believe you're chucking them over him, aren't you, Matt? Uh, yes, yes. I've, yeah. I've donated uh, £10 for it. And also, uh, yeah, I get an extra bucket. Yeah, I might, I might do another donation. Just chuck a little few extra ice cubes in for me as well. Um, anyway, back onto the show. Again, like I said, it was all about the Couch 5K. A lot of people start off to start their running journey. You start off with 30 seconds running one week and then like a minute and you build up and up and up. And Donna, you did yours about this time last year. Firstly, what was your thoughts on the Couch 5K program? Did it help encourage you, the structure structure with it? Did it keep you motivated? Yeah, I actually, I'll actually tried it for a few years, um, but quit. But then obviously... With Matt running, he was just like begging me every week to like go and do it. So I thought um, I'll try and stick to it, and I actually quite enjoyed it. I did like one day, miss a day, and um, got really into it. Yeah, Tried, I was getting very competitive, and <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed it. That's that's good, and like you said, like there is that competitive side, especially like we all get that from races and, and like when park run was on, you get, and everyone thrives on competitiveness. So competing against yourself, I think is the best way to compete. And that's exactly what you're doing. So from your point of view, Matt, did you feel the couch 5k was the perfect thing for Donna having that structure? If, if say she was just to go out, I know some people go and run one mile around the block and then the next day they're trying one, 1.1 mile. Do you think the structure of the couch 5k really helped her keep motivated and keep going out? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, like like she said before, she she tried it a few years ago. I think it was 2016, and then two, again 2017. And she tried it a couple of times, and, and and she got put off by it. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Um, but this time round, uh, obviously with lockdown hitting, she had more more time to herself, pretty much. And and she got out and she made the plans to go out and do it. Like like she said, run a day, miss a day, run a day, miss, and she had that structure. And with everyone's mental mental health suffering. Her getting out in that sunshine in, in lockdown one because it was nice weather uh, then, weren't it? And uh, it, it kind of brought you along, didn't it? it? Just made you get out and, and clear your own head, like I keep telling us <laughs> all these years that it, it running does. It's, exactly, I think that it does help clear your head. I know, Donna, you were saying in the past you hadn't managed to stick with it, and I think that happens in everyone's running career. I know I sometimes do something and don't stick with it. Do you think? Because of lockdown and because there wasn't much else to do, kept you motivated and kept you stick, sticking with it? Or was it because you had Matt there saying, look, keep with it, keep with it? Because I know you set up an Instagram account around that time, so you joined the running community. What do you think helped make you stick with it this time? I think just support others as well. Obviously, I've met quite a few friends from Instagram and they've kept me going as well. Mm. Plus, plus Matt, obviously. Bug, bugging you all the time. 
Yeah. yeah. That, that, I'm... When, she, when she graduated as well, a lot, a lot of the uh, the guys from Instagram came. I mean, I met Rob through Instagram. He came down. Uh, Scott came up from down south, and, and we had a little bit of a party for a type thing, like a, a festival type, a fake park run. I bought, I got her a medal, and when she crossed that finish line and stuff, and it, I just tried tried making it a bit of a day of it. So obviously, there were no races for her to, to look forward to. So yeah, that was that was enjoyable, wasn't it? Yeah. Nice. yeah. I think, like you said, like obviously most people graduate with park run. We can't have that at the moment. But I think the good thing was for you, Don, is some people would have done Couch 5K, they would have done park run and they're stuck at that. But you then went on to go and do your 10K. So I think people need to look at that. And like you said, sometimes it doesn't work out and you may have to give it a couple of months break and try at it again. Was there any points during the Couch 5K sort of program where you thought, oh, no, I can't do this. I'm going to have to stop it all again. And what helped you get through that stage to get out the door for your next run? Yeah, not really. I had a few weeks where I got like a little bit upset with, uh, I felt like I couldn't do it, but then mm. I just carried on and just stuck with yeah. it. Went back a week, didn't you? Yeah. She, she needed to, she, she did go back a week and she, she went back to, to the next uh, level before it and just started again from there. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, actually, going going back a week because sometimes you feel like if you can't go into the next week you may feel like you're failing a bit but so many people do go back a week sometimes I know um like in our running club we sometimes say people go back a week if you want and yeah. and stuff like that so yeah I think I think doing that was really good yeah so I, think, before... I think one of the well, I think one of the girls uh, mentioned it on the, on the podcast didn't you, that I think they, they ended up going back a couple of weeks and it, it, it doesn't mean nothing if you go back a week it doesn't hurt anything it, yeah. it does it does help it mm. does help yeah, no, I, I think like like you said, and like the couch five k stick, you do need to stick with it, but there's no rush to jump onto the next week if you don't feel comfortable. So I think that was really good. So before we go on to the quick fire questions, because I know I've got you two this week, Matt with Statman John, do you know what's going on with him in Spain at the moment? Like, <laughs> do do you understand now? I, yeah, don't, yes. I don't. I don't want to understand, but I understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I, I just wanted to check. I didn't have to do a little lesson for you on to, on no, today's episode. On, on the birds and the bees. No, I understand now. Okay, okay, I'm glad. Maybe Donna's had a word with you about all that and about the birds and the bees. Sat you down for a little chat. <laughs> so, on to the quick fire questions. Normally, we have a guest from that week, but again, Matt really wants to do his quick fire questions. We will start off. I've got eight. So, Matt, what is your favourite race of all time? Uh, first marathon, first major, London. I say, I've said it on the podcast before, but, yeah, the atmosphere, the, the, the stage, going to London for the first time and doing running a marathon, yeah, that's got to be my, uh, my, my all-time favourite, I think. Big time. And I know, Donna, you haven't, unfortunately, had the chance to do a race yet because of COVID. I mean, the most used word in the whole wide world at the moment. Well, ho hopefully not anymore soon, fingers crossed. What is your favourite race that you've spectated that Matt's done? Mine's got to be when uh, he did Belfast Marathon and he proposed to me on ni mile 19. <laughs> yes. See, oh. you probably should have said that as well, Matt. I, to be I'm in trouble now, I'm, I'm in trouble <laughs> Yeah. You, you taking all the glory for yourself and London. Best you... race, but no. it, it was quite rememberable. It, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. And and maybe maybe you have to do something even better next time you go and do another marathon, Matt. You've got to try and think of something extra special this time. Maybe go down and give her a Harry Bow ring or something. <laughs> Just recreate it every mile 19. And it gives you a break in the marathon anyway. Sure. So we go well, we go we go to Donna first because Matt went first last time. Again, this is something that you haven't unfortunately had the chance to do, but favourite park run. Have you had the chance to do a lap of any park run route? I know you're near Rother Valley and Clifton. Have you managed to do a lap of any yet and thought, oh, I quite enjoy that? Or have you done one and you thought, oh, no, I'm not a fan of that one? I've been around Clifton Park a few times, but um, never done the full park run. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Well, like... No, I don't like the hills. I'm not very good on hills. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm with you, Donna. I, I live in a very, very flat part of the UK. Yeah, what... I prefer flat routes to hills. I'm not yeah. very good on hills. <laughs> and doing that a couple of times won't be any fun at all. What about you, Matt? Your favourite park run? I've, I've only done one park run. Um, I've, I've run the uh, Rother Valley park run route, but Clifton Park's my only park run I've run. 
And I, I do enjoy I do enjoy that route. It's it's three lap course and it's it is hilly and I'm quite freaky like that. I like my hills. I don't mind doing them. <laughs> yeah, you're a bit, you're a bit weird. Favorite pre race meal, Matt? Oh, you're good. Oh, you're gonna love this one. It's gonna be pizza. You're on the pizza, pizza. boat. Yes. Donna, are you on the pizza boat with us? I like pizza, but I'd say curry. <laughs> <laughs> curry. Yeah. It could go one of two ways. Maybe maybe a curry before a 10K, but maybe not a curry before a marathon. That's a long time. No. No. Not going into too much no. details, because this does go out on a Saturday morning. People might be having breakfast. But, uh, yeah. Um, your favourite piece of running kit, Donna, what would you go for? Uh, I'd say my pocket apparel shorts. They're the best shorts I've ever bought. Um, so comfortable. <laughs> hashtag not gifted. Yeah. <laughs> Has- hashtag uh, make me an ambassador. They're yeah. the ones you put your phone in as well, can't you? Can you have your phone at one side and your, your bits in the other side. So. Nice. That's good. What about you, Matt? Uh, I'd probably say my running, running belt where I can keep my phone and stuff in it and be car keys and I, I generally don't leave the house without, without running in, in that so that's it. that they're handy aren't they yeah. and running in the morning or night we go Matt first uh, morning get it out of it we get them and en- endorphins uh, flowing and, uh, and start the day right yeah I like it what about you Donna I prefer night time because I, I do better at night time <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> no, it's because you don't get up in the morning. That's what it is. I, I suppose that, that, that works, though, because with the kids in the house, it works because Matt can go out and do his in the morning and Donna can go out and do hers in the evening instead of trying to fight for a time. Um, now, running in the heat or in the rain? So I'll say running in the Sahara Desert or Antarctica. Antarctica for me. Oh, well, that's, 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 that's the heat. That's the heat. Although I do... I do who doesn't love running in the rain when it starts coming down? Mm. But yeah, so probably to the heat. I, I wanted to go for a run today because it was raining a bit, but unfortunately I ran out of time. And I was a bit like, I was really looking forward to actually just running in the rain because it, it, the heat recently is just poof, yeah. way hot. I'm not complaining and I love the heat, but sometimes I like a bit of rain on me. It makes me go quicker. What is your pump up pre run song? We go to you first, Matt. Oh, me first. Uh, it's got. So it used to be POD Boom. Uh, I've said it on the podcast before, um, but recently I've changed it because Eminem's uh, brought one out uh, to like collapse. And there's a start, the starting lyrics, the opening lyrics on it are quite meaningful and they kind of make you think, "Come on, let's let's get it done." Do you know what I mean? Mm. But yeah, uh, to like collapse, Eminem. I like it. I like it. And do you run till you collapse? Do you take it literally, or do you yeah, just? Yeah, yeah. You've got to sometimes, haven't you? If you're running. <laughs> If you're trying to get them PB, you've got to run till you collapse. You've got to run till you collapse. What about you, Donna? Do you have a pre-race pump-up song or maybe you listen to a podcast? Yeah, I listen to podcasts, but I don't really run to music. I've, I've um, only listened to music a few times. Mm. But I don't really listen to music while I'm running. I feel I feel the same sometimes. Sometimes I like the people behind me. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I like to be in my own thoughts, especially like... If you're running, if I'm running in a city, I may listen. But if I'm running out in the countryside or a park, I like to listen to everything around me. So one last quick fire question for you both. We go to Donna first. What if you could give one piece of running advice to a new runner? What would it be? I'd say not to compare yourself to other people. Just run at your own pace. I like that one. And I think it's something that we should all try and follow because the only person you can beat is yourself and better who you were yesterday what about you matt one piece of running advice uh yeah it's that same I've, I've been telling donna for for months and months that because she should be coming um upset why can't i run, run as good as that person why can't i be as fast as that i, I said look don't compare yourself to them it's your own race it's your own target that's what you need to be doing mm. on your own on your own progress and that's that's my advice as well yeah and everyone has different stories i i sit in my bedroom because i'm working from home so i can go and run in the morning or if i don't feel great in the morning i can run at lunchtime so my runs are going to look better whereas other people may have childcare and can only run at a specific time or maybe aren't eating better because they're having to cook at the same time as their kids yeah and if we're comparing ourselves to people and we compare ourselves to the highest level we're never going to retain that so yeah we're not all going to be. We're not all going to be Mo Farah, Bridget Koskai, Elliot Kipchoge, 
or any of those amazing runners. Or, 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 or Ke- Kepen, Kepen Getich. Kepen well, Getich. <laughs> yep, well done, Matt. So we, we, can't, we can't beat them, so we may as well stop comparing ourselves to people and just compare ourselves to ourselves. And that's what we all need to try and do. And I think on that positive note, I'll let you guys go. If anyone wants to follow you on Instagram, Matt, what's your Instagram handle? It's at Matty Owls. And Donna, what's your Instagram handle? At Donna Nelly underscore run. No, at Donna. <laughs> you worse than him. It, you've, at... done a, you've, done a, you've done a me. It's at Donna underscore Nelly underscore runs. Okay. Matt, Matt knows it and that's why he's and here. Jack, and Jack, you. And I'm at Jack Penfold running. Nice and simple. Just my name with running on the end because I couldn't think of anything witty to go with it. So I'm going to let you guys go now. It's getting a little bit dark here. Um... And I will be in with my outro. And funnily enough, I may have my velvet blazer on me. Um, just just imagine it floated back from the laundrette quickly. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for coming along. And I'll speak to you soon. See you later. So there you go, guys. That is another episode of After the Finish Line wrapped up, popped a bow on top and popped under the Christmas tree. I'm saying Christmas because I'm just excited for Christmas. I know we're miles and miles away. Thank you so much to Matt and Donna for coming along. I know Matt's watching this because he's edited it. So thank you both for coming along and Matt editing it. It was really good talking to him. I thought it flowed really, really well. Well done to Donna again on completing the Couch 5K. I know it was last year, but she did incredible for it and has been hitting PB since, so keep that up. If you enjoyed this week's episode of After the Finish Line and want to hear more about um, the Couch 5K, you can go back and check the podcast out. We had three guests on there this week talking about Couch the 5K, all about their different journeys. Katie, Vary and Emma. That was really, really interesting with their chat with Rob about their insights about it. And if you enjoyed this episode of After the Finish Line, give it a thumbs up, press subscribe. And guess what? When you press subscribe, a little bell comes up next to it. Just ding that and you'll get notification next time I upload a video. That's all for me this week. If you want to catch the podcast next week, Rob will be talking to James Dunn and I'll be back on another episode of After the Finish Line coming out on Saturday with another member of our Fartlek family to dissect it all with a knife and fork. I think that's everything, so I can let you go now and enjoy your Saturday if you are watching on a Saturday or a Sunday if you're watching on a Sunday or a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I think Craig David does a song like that. Anyway, I'm rambling on, so go and have a lovely rest of the day. Or if it's night time, have a lovely evening and a lovely good night's sleep. Goodbye.